How's it going everyone? Today I'm back for another install video and today's video is going to be walking you guys through how to install these race louver fender vents on your FRS, BRZ or 86. Now the thing I like about race louvers is that they're very data driven. They spend a lot of time inside the wind tunnel gathering data to make sure that their vents maximize cooling and venting efficiency. They also make a handful of different options for fender vents on our car. Uh, they have these curved top vents and then they also have side vents right here. I decided to go with the curved top vents because I think that they'll match the hood vents that I have right here and also are are very efficient but the side vents that they make for the car are about equally efficient you can't go wrong either way which with with which ones you choose the top or the side vents but for today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install these curved top vents now there are a handful of reasons why you want to install fender vents for example when your wheel spins inside the wheel well it creates an area of high pressure that can be released by installing these fender vents which makes it easier for the wheel to spin inside the wheel well in addition to that if you have splitter diffusers like I showed you how to install in my last install video or brake ducting kits, the fender vents allow an area for the air traveling into the wheel well to escape, which makes both the splitter diffuser or the brake ducting kit more efficient. In addition to that, if you remove the fender liner in entirety, there's air traveling through your grill and through your radiator that if it now has the opportunity through the removed fender liner, can travel through these fender vents, making your cooling capacity more efficient. And lastly, these fender vents also do increase front downforce, which is always a plus. So with that being said, let's get to the install. And the first step to the install is deciding what you're going to do with your fender liner. There are three different options. The first option is to remove your fender liner in entirety. And this is going to maximize the efficiency of your fender vent. The only downside to this is it does create the opportunity for rocks and dirt to get kicked up inside uh, your fender and also ding the inside of your fender. In addition to that, if you drive your car in the rain or in the wet or even in the snow, it creates the opportunity for water and dirt and mud to get kicked inside of the engine bay and possibly create a short or damage something. So I would only recommend removing the fender liner in entirety if your car is a more track oriented car like mine and it's not gonna be exposed to the elements as frequently as you would in a daily driver. Now the next option is to remove your fender liner but spray the inside of your fender with any kind of rubber spray that you can find and the benefit to this is it'll reduce the opportunity for rocks and stuff to get kicked up and damage the inside of your fender the only downside to this is spraying that rubber spray does increase the weight of your fender which is a negative because weight is generally bad inside a car now the third option is to leave your fender liner in there and cut a hole where the fender vent is allowing the air to escape through that hole and out of the fender vent. One thing you might want to consider if you're going to be doing that option is to put some kind of mesh over the hole that you cut. That way the um, structure of the fender liner is not compromised and it won't uh, flex or anything and possibly touch the wheel. Now, because my car is a dedicated track car, I've decided to remove the fender liner in entirety to maximize the efficiency of my fender vent. Once you've decided what you're gonna do with the fender vent, you can go ahead and get to the actual install of these fender vents. To perform this install, you're gonna need a couple of tools. I use a reciprocator saw, but you can also use a cutoff wheel. There's also a Dremel tool, some blue painter's tape, some black electrical tape, a drill with drill bits, a riveter, and also any device to measure with. Now we're going to line up the fender vent about where it's going to be on the fender and then put some blue painter tape down on that entire area. So once you've got the area on the fender taped off, the next step is to figure out where we're going to be cutting. And in order to figure that out, we're going to take this large piece of paper that was included inside the packaging. If you'll look at this large piece of paper, you'll see an outline of the fender vent. And on the inner line, you'll see where it says, use this line to cut the hole in the hood. Obviously it's going on your fender, but nonetheless, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take some scissors and you're gonna cut out the section that says, use this line to cut in the hood. And once you're done, it should look like this, upside down. In order to make sure that there was consistency between this side and the other side, I basically used two points of reference. The first point is the fender garnish right here. And the second point is this curve shape in the fender. Now the edges of the fender vent itself, so um, the distance between where the hole is and where the actual edge of it is, about two inches. So I decided that I'm going to make it so that there's an additional two inches between the fender vent and this curve right here and the fender vent and this fender garnish. And in order to achieve that, I need to make sure that the hole that I cut is four inches away from here and four inches away from here, because this two inches plus the two inches of distance I want equals four inches in both the fender garnish part and the fender curve. So now that I know I want four inches from here and four inches from here, I can use those measurements to tape this piece on and draw an outline of the hole that we're going to be cutting.
I'm gonna also lay down a couple layers of extra tape around the line of the fender vent. That way when I drag the saw across it, it won't damage the fender. So basically we're ready to start drilling and also cutting the fender. But before I did that, I just did one quick thing to help make sure that none of the metal shavings from the drilling or the cutting gets into the brake system or anything down here in the wheel well. Um, and the way that I did that was I removed part of the fender liner, but I essentially just left it sagging right here. This way it acts as a shield so that if any of the metal parts come down onto it, it will hit this and not hit any of the brake caliper or anything here. Now to begin the cutting process, we're going to drill holes that are 3 8 inch big on the corners of your outlines, and you're going to drill them just a little bit inside the outline. Because I was using a reciprocating saw to cut my lines, I had to use the Dremel tool to start the cuts a little bit so that I could fit the entire blade of the reciprocating saw into the holes. Now at certain points towards the top left, my reciprocating saw blade did end up hitting the chassis, so I had to switch back to the Dremel tool to cut my lines a little bit before I could go back to the reciprocating saw. Once your hole is cut, you can go ahead and test fit the fender vent, and as long as everything fits, you can go ahead and mark the holes where you're going to be drilling for the rivets. Next, drill 3 16 inch holes in all the places that you marked. There is one step I forgot to film, and that is once you're done taking off the tape and you're ready to put on the fender vent, you can go ahead and put down some black electrical tape or some black paint down on any of the areas where the body color of your car may show through the fender vent. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and rivet on the fender vent. And just like that, the install is done. I think that these fender vents look fantastic and they're also very functional, which obviously with this car being a track car and being a time attack car, function comes first, but the fact that these look good is definitely a huge plus. Make sure you guys check out Race Louvers. They make a lot of awesome hood vents and also fender vents for an array of different kinds of cars. And they're all just as quality as this one. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys subscribe and like this video. You can also follow me on Instagram at narrowman98. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.